This is HBU Huskies Men's Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Huskies Basketball is brought to you by these corporate partners of HBU Athletics, Houston Federal Credit Union, Marriott Houston West Chase, Memorial Hermann Healthcare System, Raising Canes, Under Armour, Firehouse Subs, Pepsi, Shipley Donuts, Four Points by Sheraton, IBEW Local 716, Jimmy John's, Kalachi Factory, and Holiday Inn Express. The DNA Husky Sports Network is your home all season long for HBU Huskies men's basketball. And right now it's just about game time, so let's head out to the arena. And good evening, everybody. Welcome in to the campus of Houston Baptist University in Southwest Houston and into Sharp Gym here, the Sharp Tank side of our game tonight between your HBU Huskies and the SFA Lumberjacks here on a Wednesday night in Houston. Midweek basketball for you on the Husky Sports Network and on HBU TV tonight. Glad to have you along for the ride wherever you are around the city of Houston, across the state of Texas, around the country, or even around the world on the World Wide Web. We're glad you've made HBU Huskies basketball a part of your midweek activities. And you should be in for an entertaining game tonight. The Huskies come in on a two-game win streak after consecutive victories, one on the road in San Antonio against Incarnate Word, and then one here at home last weekend against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. A couple of nice wins. 96-92 96-92 on the road, 73-72 here at home. And they're looking to extend that win streak against a team in SFA that they have not beaten since returning to the Southland Conference to Division I uh, back five years ago. In fact, uh, they have just won one game ever against South, uh, our check it, Stephen F. Austin. Uh, 20-1, and one, SFA holds the edge in this 21-game series to this point. And the Huskies will be looking for win number two tonight. SFA is a team that, of course, you know if you followed uh, Southland Conference basketball, has had much success over the last several seasons. They have been the conference rep- representative in the NCAA tournament five different times. They've got six different Southland Conference titles under their belt. Uh, they, uh, this year, though, have struggled at times. They are 11-9 and nine overall, 4-4 four and four in the conference, and most recently on Saturday night, Dropped a 22-point decision in Huntsville to the Sam Houston State Bearcats. The final there was 94 to 72. So the Huskies maybe hope to catch them in a little bit of a downswing and not let them up off the floor this evening and take advantage of that for win number three in a row. We'll see about that. We'll see how things play out as we go along this evening. But first. Before we head up to the tip-off this evening, we're going to chat with assistant coach Jed Kenny to get a little closer look at the Lumberjacks. And then, of course, our usual game time chat with the head coach, Ron Cottrell. And that'll take us right up to game time. So stick with us. We're moving right along here on the Huskies Free Game Show on the Huskies Sports Network. Houston Federal Credit Union and Houston Baptist University have joined forces to put the howl back in your finances. HFCU offers several products and services such as auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards. And HFCU has a financial education program, Elevate, which is tailored to helping you increase your financial knowledge. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. Your heart sounds good, Daddy. Regular checkups are good for many things. No tumors. Uh-oh. Your colon sounds funny. But they can't detect everything. At the Memorial Hermann Wellness Institute, get a full body scan, heart scan, or virtual colonoscopy to help you find problems early enough to do something about them. I'm glad you're okay, Daddy. Schedule your scan today. Call 713-222-CARE. Memorial Hermann for your whole life. Coming to you in Living Cola.
refreshing Pepsi Cola from the wonderful folks who put the R in Cola. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Back on the Huskies pregame show, it's time for our Eye on the Opponent segment where we take a look at tonight's opponent, the SFA Lumberjacks, and we do that this evening with assistant coach Judd Kenny. Judd, uh, SFA, a team that's uh, traditionally given us some trouble here since we've joined the Southland Conference and a team that is always uh, kind of a rough battle for anybody they come up against. But um, what are we looking at tonight against this team? They're, they're a little bit of a different squad this year. Yeah, you know, they've had some injuries that have kind of thinned out the ranks a little bit, so they don't have the depth that they've had in the past, but they're still extremely athletic, still really individually talented, still have, you know, second and third leading scorer in conference play. Um, and so they still have guys who can make plays and can go get buckets and, and, and be athletic and get do the things they want to do defensively. They just don't have the depth because of the injuries that they've had in the past, and I think it's forced them to have to do some things differently, and, and it's not allowing them to be quite as aggressive and be quite as in-your-face as they've been able to be and be successful recently. Is that a matter of uh, not having the personnel to, to play that intensely for 40 minutes or uh, the, the type of personnel that they have to fill the roles can't do the, what they'd like to do? I think they still have the talent to do what they'd like to do. I think it's just a lack of depth, really. They, they, they're they still extremely, extremely talented guys. You know, a lot of people had Bogues and Harris as two of the top players in the league preseason. I think both were picked in different polls or in different, you know, publications to be the player of the year. And so they still have the talent. They got a high major transfer in Fitzgerald and, and Bain and Neiman are guys who've been there and been through the battles. And so I think the talent is still there. They just, they don't have the bodies to know that I can go all out. And when that guy comes in, he's going to be able to go all out as well. So they might not be able to be as aggressive as they want to be. But I think the talent is, is still there, certainly, on the offensive end. And they just can't be quite as aggressive defensively because of the lack of depth. You mentioned Harris and Bogues and uh, Fitzgerald. Those three guys combined, I think, for about 65 to 70 percent of their offensive production for the season. Uh, what's the key to stopping any of those guys or all of them? Yeah, stopping all of them would be a big task. I think if we can slow down all of them and find a way to stop. I mean, Harris and, and Bogues especially, they can score at all three levels. And Fitzgerald started adding a little bit of range to his game recently. He's been shooting the three more and starting to knock it down. He hit a couple big ones in some recent games to get them back into or to pull them ahead. And so we have to be really solid fundamentally. We've been doing a much better job defensively, and the guys are finally – embracing and putting into action what we've been preaching all year to them and so if we can continue to be solid defensively hold them to one shot or less because they're a really good offensive rebounding team especially Bain is kind of an unknown or underappreciated guy on their roster who can come in and get some cheap buckets I, I don't mean to demean him by saying cheap but he can get those those blue collar buckets that can really hurt you and be the difference in a game so we need to slow him down I don't know if we're uh, anybody is good enough to stop him but I think if we can do a good job on the defensive end of making them work for their shots making them take contested shots as opposed to getting some stuff in transition, then at least you get into their legs a little bit. And then you have to attack them on the offensive end as well and make them guard. And if they have to guard, they can't be as aggressive. They suffered a big loss on Wednesday night to Sam Houston State up in Huntsville. What did you see from that game that Sam Houston was able to exploit? Sam came out, I mean, with all cylinders fire. They were knocking down threes. They were getting to the basket. They did a really good job of attacking when they had SFA in a scramble mode. They attacked the closeouts. They did a really good job of getting to the rim. And when you attack the basket against SFA, there's going to be two or three bodies coming down to contest shots. And so you have to finish through contact. You have to finish, you know, when you know you're going to get hit. And you have to finish when, you know, the, the opportunities present themselves because they are so aggressive and they're up the line and they're forcing you into backdoor situations. You have to be able to make the pass and, and finish the play. And Sam did a great job of doing that. And that's something we've talked to our guys about is, look, a lot of our offense has backdoor action and it has, you know, reads in it. And if we make the right reads, we're going to get really good looks. We have to take advantage of them. Well, we had a nice win over the weekend against A&M Corpus Christi. It'd be nice to add a little bit to that winning streak tonight. Absolutely. The guys, have, you know, obviously when you win a couple in a row, anytime you win a game in conference play, it's big. If you can win two in a row and, and try to build on something, knowing you got a great opponent coming in, it adds to the excitement in practice. And we've had a couple of really good days of practice. And I think the guys are focused and they're excited about the opportunity and the challenge because SFA, even though their record might not be as good as it is in the past, they still have that mystique to a lot of people. And so, you know, you got a big opponent coming in. Uh, the guys seem to have really embraced the challenge and hopefully they step up tonight and, and you know, make it number three. Good luck. Dogs up. Thank you very much. Judd Kinney, assistant coach for the Huskies. We'll take a timeout and come back with more on the Huskies pregame show after this. 
Run with UA Map My Run. With your UA connected footwear, you can leave your phone behind. However, if you choose to run with it, the UA Map My Run app will give map views of your route and a deeper look at your workout with additional stats. We are under armor. The future is ours. Under Armour. I'm Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. Back when we were firemen, when it came to food, we said it better be something good and and a lot lot of it. That's what you get at Firehouse Subs. Take our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breast, Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese, all steam heated and piled high on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. You're going to cover that, right? My money's on the sub. Love the confidence. (laughs) Firehouse Sub, founded by firemen. Building Houston to compete on the world stage is what we do at the IBW. It's important to us that Houston knows why we do what we do, not just what we do. Sure, we're the best electricians. We train 10,000 hours to be the best. But we get up early so Houston is built to compete. To be the best, hire the best. Skilled labor isn't cheap, and cheap labor just isn't all that skilled. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. We are back on the Huskies pregame show. It's time for our game time chat with the head coach, Ron Cottrell, as we get ready for the SFA Lumberjacks tonight. And coach, uh, before we look ahead to this tough opponent this evening, look back quickly at uh, A&M Corpus Christi again. Uh, just a nice win over a quality opponent here at Sharp Gym on Wednesday night. And it has given you a little bit of a mo- momentum and a two-game win streak coming into this one. Well, it, it was a great game for our guys to, to be able to finish off and, and get the win. You're playing a, a quality opponent in Sharp, and, and it was a back-and-forth game. We got a little bit of a lead, and and, and um, they fought their way back, and, and we knew that was going to happen. We knew that, that they, they weren't going to – uh, roll over by any stretch of the imagination. They were going to come back and fight their way back in the game, and sure enough, it went down to the wire. And, and uh, thankfully, we hit the, the free throws when it mattered. If we had hit some of those earlier in the game, I think it would have been a little bit different situation down the stretch, but we were able to hit the ones that, that we needed to down the stretch. Well, efforts that uh, we talked about on Saturday night but uh, stood out to me are guys that you have inserted recently into the lineup, Stephen Osuji and Ty Dalton. And... Uh, Seems like they have increased their contributions as these games have gone along. I think you know, anytime you can get inserted into the lineup and, and get your feet wet and kind of get comfortable, you you see guys kind of thrive a little bit more and get to get you know in a position where they feel really good about what their you know what their role is with the team. And, and I think those two guys have done that. Hopefully, that will continue with them. And 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 our hopes obviously is is that, that the guys that we took out of the starting lineup that that will give them an opportunity to kind of work their way and get get motivated to get back into uh, a rotation where they're playing a little, you know, more minutes and, and contributing more like they were early in the year. Uh, certainly for, to, to be successful in our conference, you're going to have to have seven, eight, nine guys on a given night uh, be able to be contributing factors uh, towards winning a ball game. And, and so we need we need help off the bench to be able to, to do the things that we need to do to be able to be successful in this conference. You know, a guy like Osuji, uh, you know, we've seen him for four-plus years now and, and what he's gone through, what he's been through, and his growth as a player and as a person on and off the court. It's especially heartening to, to watch him get some minutes and, and be able to contribute significantly to the team's success. Yeah, he's been here and, and been all the way through the program. Came here as a walk-on for us out of Kincaid, and and uh, you know stayed through hard times. Had had some physical injuries and, and redshirted, and and uh, you know has really fought through a 
all that and never gotten his head down. And, you know, I know there were times, I'm sure, in the back of his mind that he wondered whether it was ever going to really happen for him, but he never expressed that. He never, it, it was always about the team and about being at HBU and being a part of the program and, and all that. And he just kept continuing to plug, and, and, and he's done a great job for us uh, in his senior year. There's nothing more than what you would want for a guy to be able to, to go out like this as a senior. Well, tonight, SFA, uh, always a tough opponent. In fact, uh, we haven't been able to beat them since we came back into the Southland Conference. Uh, but they are a little bit of a different squad this year, lacking as much depth as we usually see out of a SFA team. What do you expect to see from these guys tonight? Well, they don't quite have the depth that they have, but the guys that do play are, are playing a lot of minutes and are still just as high quality as what they've had over the years. And, you know, that, that starts with, with Bogues and, and uh, Kevon Harris. Those two guys uh, really make them run offensively and, and really are, are terrific offensive players, and we're going to have to do everything we can to kind of keep them under control. I think they're second and third in scoring in, in the league, and, and so that's going to be, uh, you know, the main – two guys that we really have to do a good job of, of getting them um, off kilter a little bit. with the lemonade, please? At Raisin Cane's, we do one thing, and we do it better than anyone else. So why not let our food do the talking? We hand cut our lemons daily. They're fresh squeezed and mixed with 100% natural cane sugar. Love the window. Raising canes, only the best chicken finger meals. One love. <laughs> At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. Anyone can get you ready. Holiday and Express gets you the readiest because ready gives a pep talk. Showtime. But the readiest gives a pep rally. I Holiday and Express, be the readiest. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. And back here at Sharp Gym, just about set to go. Let's take a minute and introduce the starting lineups to you. First of all, for the visitors from Nacogdoches and Stephen F. Austin State University, they send out this starting five tonight. First of all, at a forward, six foot eight, grad student, a transfer from uh, Texas A&M University out of Atlanta, Georgia, Devontae Fitzgerald gets the start. He'll be joined by a six foot six junior from Freeport, the Bahamas, Nathan Bain, averaging 5.7 points per game. They'll be joined by Salmuli Nimanen, a six seven junior from Helsinki, Finland, 3.2 points and 1.9 rebounds per contest for Nimanen. Then rounding out the starting five in the backcourt, Kevon Harris, a six six junior from Ellenwood, Georgia, transfer from DME Academy, Florida, 16.9 points per game. And Shannon Bogues, a 6'2 senior from Colleen Ellison High School and McLennan County Junior College, averaging 17.5 points per contest. Four-year Husky is the starting five that we've seen for the last four contests. Now out on the floor for head coach Ron Cottrell. Ed Hart gets a start in the middle, the big 6'10 senior from Deer Valley High School in Phoenix. He'll be joined on the wings by Ty Dalton, the sophomore from here in Houston at Second Baptist High School. And Ian DeBose, the sophomore from Durham, North Carolina. Then in the backcourt, Braxton Bonds, the redshirt senior from Nashville, starts at the point. And Stephen Osuji, the redshirt senior from Kincaid High School here in the Houston area. He will get the start at the other guard. Hart controls the opening tip, but Bonds can't save it. Knocks it out of bounds on the sideline. And it will be SFA basketball to get things going. And Bain will go across the way and inbound the basketball. And we are just now underway. First offensive possession, Shannon Bogues with the basketball. Lumberjacks in the road, purple uniforms tonight. Left corner, they go to Neiman in baseline. He's cut off by DuBose, and they go back out top to Bogues. Screen from Bain. He angles left, 
Pulls up, pops from 16, and he drains the jumper from the left angle. Bogues, their leading scorer, and he's first on the board tonight with 19 and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Out top, Bonds tries to feed it to Dalton, and it's stolen away by Neiman, and he's going to drive it in himself and lays it up and in with a little shovel. And Neiman has two. Lumberjacks have the first four. And the Huskies will bring it back up. Braxton Bonds directs traffic, gets a screen from Ed Hart. Get it in the corner to Osuji. He's going to drive in. Suge drives down low, can't get it to go, but Hart with the follow won't go. Off the back iron, and this time it's cleared by Fitzgerald. He'll leave it for Harris. Harris will drive in right side, take it to the rack, and it rolls off the glass and down through for two. And Coach Cottrell not happy and calls for a timeout quickly here with 18.44 to go and a 6-0 deficit. 30-second timeout as Coach Cottrell just trying to stop the flow that this game has started off in. Maybe turn things around here before it gets too far out of control. See if he can get his team back focused on heading the opposite direction as far as the scoreboard goes. We told you in the pregame show the Huskies have only one win in the entire history of this series. They've played SFA 21 times as a program, and they have won exactly one of those games back in 1979, December 12th, 1979, right here at Sharp Gym, 70-67 to 67 score. Huskies out of the timeout with the basketball. Dalton out top. Going to dribble down left side, takes it in, cut off on the baseline. Back out top, Osuji going to drive down. He's bumped, and we'll get a whistle as Suge tried to go to the rack. And he's going to be fouled by Bain. First foul of the ball game on either side, and it'll belong to the SFA Lumberjacks with 18-19 to go. On the dribble, so the Huskies will not have free throws yet. And Bonds will go to the baseline and get it inbound way out top to Ian DeBose. Ian, the leading scorer for the Huskies, is averaged down to 17-9 a game. Suji with a three from the left wing, bounces off the iron, won't go, and the rebound cleared by John Como, who checked in during the last stoppage. For the Lumberjacks, gets it down to Neiman and back out top to Harris. Kevon Harris with a three, short, and Osuji with the board. He's off on the run. Down on the baseline, leave it for Dawson. With Dalton stolen away by Como, and Como brings it back the other way for the Lumberjacks. And he will walk as he held up. Was going to pass it into the corner looking for Bogues. Saw the passing lane was cut off and slid the foot and turns it over back to the Huskies. 17.43 to go. First turnover of the night for SFA. The Huskies already with three. Early on here, Dalton drives into the paint. Now he's going to turn around, spins. Jumper, too strong, won't go. Bonds with the rebound, floated it up. Maybe rushed that shot, and it won't go anywhere, and Kevon Harris pulls it down. Take it back the other way. He'll drive in. Shot is going to be short and tipped away. Knocked out of bounds. I think Fitzgerald got a hand on that and knocked it out of bounds, but it'll go back over to the Huskies. <coughs> Mitchell Sorrell is going to take the opportunity, a freshman out of Jack Yates High School here in Houston to check in for the Lumberjacks. We saw his former head coach, Greg Wise, in the building tonight. Wise, a former HBU Husky. Dalton with the basketball. Left side, give it to DeBose. Ian's going to drive in, can't get the shot to go. Misses, follows his shot, but... Kicks it back outside. Dalton with the three off the mark, and the rebound's going to bounce out to the corner, and Como will run it down for the Lumberjacks. Huskies not finding the range yet here. Three and a half minutes in, and there's a pass thrown out of bounds by Como. Give it back to HBU. 16.40 to go. Como will check out. And checking in is Otis Walker, a freshman from Baton Rouge. 
His first activity of the night. The Huskies bring it back up. Still down by six. Looking for their first basket of the night. Dalton gets a screen from Hart. Looks inside. Now feeds it down to Ed. Down low and he goes off the glass and through for two. Nice find by Dalton for the assist. And Hart finished it off for the first points of the ball game for HBU. Back the other way. Here's a tip out of bounds. Knocked out by Osuji for the Huskies. It'll be SFA basketball. 16.06 to go. The Bogues will go to the baseline to inbound it for the Jacks. He'll lob it way out top and over and back. Walker didn't establish footing in the backcourt and jumped across the line to catch the ball. And that is a violation. Now we've got a discussion among the officials about something. Danny Chance, the lead official of the knife. Jeff Malum, Marcus Pettigrew. Well, now they're going to reverse themselves. And Jeff Malum overrules Marcus Pettigrew. And SFA will keep possession of the basketball. 15-54 to go. And now we've got an offensive foul going to be called on SFA. And that will give the ball to the Huskies with 15-54 to go. But we come to the first media break of the first half. Under 16 left. The Huskies finally on the board after a struggle to get things started here. Trailing 6-2 to two as you listen in and watch on the Husky Sports Network and HBU TV. All of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men. It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known, and if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly, and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything, and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man. And the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. We are four minutes and six seconds into our ball game tonight. The Huskies are just one of eight from the floor early on in this game, but they've got the basketball after the offensive foul charged against Kevon Harris just before the timeout. And Osuji has it, right side angle. Picked up by Honest Walker. Osuji drives in, bounce pass down low to Hart. Kick it out on the left wing to Dalton. He fires up a three, and Dalton finds the range. First bucket of the night for the sophomore. Making his fourth start of the season. He's got three, and the Huskies are back to within one. Bogues with the basketball right side. He's going to fire up a three. Off the mark. The rebound pulled down by Sorrell. Kicks it out to Walker. New shot clock. Walker will drive in. Float it up over Dalton. Can't get it to go. Short and Dalton takes it away. Almost stolen, but Osuji saves it down underneath to DuBose. And Ian underneath lays it off the glass and in for two. And the Huskies up for the first time tonight. Bonds right behind Harris. Knocks it away. Goes out of bounds. It'll stay in possession of the Jacks. 14.53 to go in the first half. They get it inbounds to Bogues. Bogues to Harris. Swing it around the outside. Fitzgerald will hand it off to Walker. Walker covered closely by Osuji. Almost lost the dribble, but saves it. Has to find some help, and he gets it to Fitzgerald. A three from outside. It won't go. The rebound's going to be tipped out of bounds, and it's knocked out off of SFA. 
Huskies basketball. Bain checks back in for the Lumberjacks and checking in for the first time tonight, Jalen Gates will join the backcourt. Osuji will get a breather. Gates out on the floor. We'll get it to Bonds and Bonds across the timeline. They go right side to DeBose out top. Gates for a three. Fouled as he put it up. He will not get it to go, but Jay will go to the free throw line to shoot three free throws here. Fourteen thirteen to go, and Jay Gates, as you know, likes to fire it up, and he gets the first free throw to go here. One more, and he'll have one to come. The Huskies increase their lead now to three with an opportunity to get it up to four as Gates has his first two points of the ball game. And now his first three. So Gates and Dalton with three apiece. DuBose and Hart with two each. And the Huskies have 10 and a four-point lead as we roll down to the 14-minute mark. Bogue's going to drive in, though, right by Dalton. It's quickness evident there as Bogue's got in and got a step on Dalton into the rack, and he lays it in for two, 10-8. Swinging around, the Huskies... Find DuBose in the corner, one dribble, and he's going to fire up a three. Ian DuBose with his first long distance dial up, and it's 13 to 8, 13.40 to go. Bogues drives in, loses his footing. Now he's going to be tied up, and Bonds is going to get the hands on the basketball, and the tied ball is going to belong to HBU. Bad break for Bogues there as he just tried to cut to the basket, lost his footing, could not move with the basketball or would have been called for traveling there. So Bonds used the opportunity to tie him up and the Huskies with the alternating possession will get it. Little housekeeping now where Bogues hit the deck right over there on the Husky head logo to the right of the paint down to our left. Salmuli Niemann is checking back in. Jovan Grujic is going to pull off the warm-up, and he won't get in in time for SFA, but he will come in at the next stoppage as the Huskies bring it up. Out top, they get it to Jay Gates. Gates for a three, rattles out. Rebound loose on the floor, but it's pulled down by Harris. Off on the run, two on two. Harris baseline at Bain. He will get by Bonds and lay it off the window for two. 13-10, the Huskies back to a three-point lead as Bonds comes up, rolls it up, won't go from the left side, and the rebound cleared by the Lumberjacks. Harris off on the move, spin around on the baseline, and we're going to get a foul underneath. As Harris got out of control, lost his footing, they're going to call a foul on Ty Dalton. Be the first on the Huskies, but they're going to send Harris to the free throw line, call it a shooting foul. And he'll get two out of this with exactly 13 minutes to go. Harris on the season, 71% free throw shooter. Rattles that one out, won't stay down. As we told you before the game, averages just shy of 17 points per game, 16.9 substitutions now for the Huskies. Philip McKenzie will check in, Dalton will check out. Ben Yoloko will also enter the game, and Ed Hart will get a breather. And they join DuBose, Bonds, and Gates out on the floor. Second free throw no good as well. DuBose clears the glass. Up ahead to Gates. Gates on the run. He's going to drive in. Blocked by Bain. Saves it on the baseline, but right to Yoloko, and Ben's going to have it go out off his knee and out of bounds. It will be Lumberjack basketball. Grujic, by the way, checked in for SFA during that stoppage. And John Como checked back in for 
Bogues as well. So Como back out on the floor. They feed it to Harris down right side, and he will not get it to go. The rebound is knocked out of bounds, though, by the Huskies on the baseline. It'll be SFA basketball with 12.33 left. Huskies up 13-10 here. End in action so far, but neither team in a great rhythm yet. Here's a runner on the baseline put up by Bain. And he got it to go off the glass, bounced around the iron, but drops down through. And the lead is cut to one, and DuBose driving in, loses control back the other way, and the Huskies will give it right back to them on the turnover. So just a little bit of a frenetic pace here up and down the floor, but each team now with four turnovers. And we've got 12 minutes and 15 seconds to go till halftime. Como angles right, gives it to Bain. Bain out top to Grujic. He goes left side back to Como. Lob it down low for Neiman and into the corner. Harris open for a three. Short off the iron. The rebound is tipped over the back. Grujic is called for the foul over the back of Uloco. That'll be the fourth team foul on SFA, and it stops the clock with exactly 12 minutes to go till halftime. Brings us to another timeout here at Sharp Gym with the Huskies up by one, 13-12, and you're listening to it on the Husky Sports Network, watching on HBU TV. What's on your mind, kid? Make it fast. I'd like to work here at Jimmy John's World's Greatest Gourmet Sandwich Shop, sir. Why do you want to work at Jimmy John's, kid? I'm perfect for Jimmy John's. Doing what? Delivery. Delivery? Delivery. We deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. That's what I heard. What'd you hear? You deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. Then you heard right. I'm a fast study, sir. You know the Jim John's slogan? The Jimmy John's slogan. Jim John's slogan is sub so fast you'll freak. Sub so fast you'll freak is a swell slogan, sir. When people call for a Jimmy John's sandwich, they want it fast. Then I'm your man, sir. How so? Because I'm fast. Fast at what? Fast at everything. Can you deliver fast? I can deliver fast. How fast? I can run in 440 and 220. Minutes? No seconds. That's fast. You deliver before? I delivered newspapers before. Were you fast? Very fast. How fast? Fast. People got tomorrow's paper today. That's fast. So do I have the job? Not so fast. How do I know you're not just some fast talker? I can get your references. When? Now. These are good references. Thank you. But at Jimmy John's, you got to be more than fast. More than fast. you got to be polite. Fast and polite. Fast and polite. I can do fast and polite. Okay, give me some time to think it over. Okay. Okay, I thought it over. When can you start? Now. Now it's good. What's your name, kid? Stefan Amalabadopoulos. Too long. How about Ed? That's fine. Welcome aboard, Ed. Jimmy John's Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. Hi, I'm Ron Cottrell. Thanks for listening to HBU Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Back here at Sharp Gym, Lonnie King along with you. Glad to have you along for the ride this evening. 12 minutes to go in the first half, 13-12 Huskies. They've hit three of their last six field goals to raise their shooting percentage for the first half here up to 29%. Made just one of their first eight. They've got the basketball in a one-point lead out of the timeout. Yuloko feeds it out top to Gates. Gates drives in, leaves it back for Ben on the baseline. Can't get it to go. Loses the rebound, and it's taken away by Como for the Jacks. SFA brings it up the floor. They get it to Bogues. Bogues will hold it up out top. Osuji back out on the floor, picks him up. Ollie Lynch Daniels is out there for the Huskies as well. He covers Como. They go to the baseline, and it goes up. Hits the underside of the iron and comes down and out of bounds off of SFA. Huskies basketball. Oliver Lynch Daniels, a 6'2 sophomore from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Seeing his first action tonight. Sets up in the corner as Osuji dribbles on the right side. They get it to Gates. Swing it to Philip McKenzie. Back out top to Ollie. He'll be picked up by Como. Dribble to the left angle. Down to the baseline to McKenzie. Double teamed on the baseline looking for help. Goes up, though, comes up short, gets his own miss. Goes back up, won't go again, but Yuloko with the pick off the miss, and he's going to be fouled. And the foul will be on Grujic. First foul on Grujic, fifth foul, or check it, that's the second on Grujic. And the fifth as a team on SFA, and it'll send Ben Yuloko to the free throw line. Where he's been pretty good recently, and he gets the first one to go here. Ben has his free throw percentage up to 52%. For a while, it was down in the 40s. Second free throw is good as well. Gets them both here and extends the lead out to three again. First two points of the night for Yuloko off the bench. And the Huskies up 15-12. 
Under 11 minutes to go till halftime. Como left side, feeds it to Bain. Bain to Gruyich, who pops out high to take the feed. Back right side, they go to Bogues. Bogues left side to Bain. He'll drive in. He's going to be bumped as he goes to the rack. It's either going to be Lynch Daniels, and it is on Oliver Lynch Daniels. Thought it might be either he or Yoloko that would be called there. But it's Oliver's first, team's second. And it'll send Nathan Bain to the free throw line again. Huskies with just two fouls tonight, but they've both been shooting fouls. Kevon Harris didn't convert either free throw. Bain converts his first one here and has one more to come. Bain on the season, a 51% free throw shooter, but he gets them both here. And with 10 and a half to go, it's back to a one-point game, 15-14 Huskies. Masuji dribbles, left side angle, way out beyond the arc. Bain now on him. Gruyich pops out. Suji drives left to right, leave it off in the corner for Gates. And Jay Gates, one dribble, pops to the wing and got the three to go. He's got six now, and it's 18-14. Down low to Gruyich, turnaround hook, won't go from the right side. The rebound cleared by Osuji. Huskies back the other way in a hurry. Suji leaves it for Gates. Gates. Picked up out on the edge by Shannon Bogues. Swinging around to Osuji, left side drive to the baseline, floated up off the iron, won't go, and the rebound loose on the floor, out of bounds off of HBU. McKenzie down low, trying to fight for it, but couldn't grab control of it. And the Lumberjacks will take possession. Kevon Harris checks back in. John Como will check out. Devontae Fitzgerald will also check in, and Gruyich will go back to the bench. 9.48 to go here till halftime. Huskies with a four-point lead. So Rail is going to check back in, but he gets to the scorer's table after the ball is inbounded. Bogues has it out top in the front court. Drives in, pulls up left side, and floats one up. A little rainbow from about 10 feet out, and it drops down through, and the lead is two for the Huskies, 18-16. Suge with the basketball again in his hands. Angles right. Now back to the middle, going to drive it in. High off the glass, won't go. Loose and underneath, Bain comes out with it. Picked up by McKenzie in the backcourt, but he'll get it to Neiman, in, and Neiman will get it up ahead to Bogues. Bogues will drive in through traffic, in the paint, put it up, off the glass, won't go, and the rebound going to be picked off by Jalen Gates, and Fitzgerald is going to get him on the arm. That'll be the sixth team foul. Fitzgerald will draw his first, and the Huskies, the next time they draw a foul on SFA, will be in the bonus the rest of the way. Roll under nine minutes to go in the first half. So Suji's going to hand it off to Lynch Daniels. Ollie drives in. He gets to the free throw circle, pulls up, puts up a jumper, and gets it to go. And Kyle Keller wants a timeout. He is not happy about something. And he's giving an earful to Marcus Pettigrew. That'll be a coach's timeout. We'll hold it right here at 30-second timeout as they talk it over. Each coach now has used up one of their first half timeouts here. They can carry the rest over. But we've got 8.46 to go till halftime. We'll see if either team will. Danny Chance, Jeff Malum, Marcus Pettigrew, the three-man crew tonight. And... Waiting on some housekeeping to get done on the opposite end of the floor. Pettigrew almost gave the ball to Fitzgerald, but now we're ready to go. Fitzgerald will get it into Shannon Bogues, and Bogues will walk it up. He's picked up with some token pressure by Jalen Gates, but they'll get it across the midcourt stripe. Bogues right side to Harris, almost stolen away by Osuji, and Osuji does get it away. There is McKenzie up ahead to Gates, and he lays it up and in. That one started by Osuji with the defensive effort. Good pick 
and feed by McKenzie up ahead to Gates. Quick to the hole, and he got the layup for two. Gates with eight, and the Huskies by six. There's a tip follow by Fitzgerald off the miss. Fitzgerald with his first points of the ball game gets the answer for SFA. They're back to within four. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Here's a turnaround right side by Ben Yoloko, and Yoloko gets it to go. And he's got four now. And the Huskies are up by six again. Check it. That's Yes, that's four now for Yoloko. Harris is going to drive in right side angle, and this time he'll get it to go off the glass. Ben stepped back. Yoloko had position down underneath, but not wanting to pick up a cheap blocking foul there. Ben just backed away, and Harris gets the layup. Here's a nice feed underneath. Osuji with the bounce pass down in the blocks to Yoloko, and he gets the layup after he gets a defender on his hip. Here's Harris back the other way, and he's got another answer. And we're going back and forth quickly here. Harris now has six, and we've got an offensive foul going to be called down low. Harris draws the charge from Oliver Lynch Daniels, and it stops the clock with 7-11 to go. It'll bring us to another timeout on the floor. Well, this one is getting interesting, just like we thought it might. 26-22, Huskies with the four-point edge on the Husky Sports Network and HBU TV. The real story is I'm in here every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. So. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> it's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HVU Athletics. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Since the sluggish one for eight start from the floor for HBU, they've shot consistently 50% now here the rest of the first half. They're now eight of their last 16, up to nine of 24 on the evening. So they've got their shooting percentage from the field up to 38%. Three of six from outside the arc and a perfect five of five at the line. SFA 10 for 21 from the floor for 48%. They have the basketball. Bogues is going to lob it down in low to Fitzgerald. He got Ed Hart on his hip, found himself wide open and dunks it down through, cuts the lead back to two for the Huskies, 26-24. Bods out there again with the dribble. He's going to lob it down low for McKenzie. He tried to dunk, couldn't get it to go, but Hart with the follow, lay it in for two, and he's fouled. And then we'll go to the line for a plus one. The foul's going to be on Nathan Bain, and Hart will get a free throw opportunity here with now a four-point lead for the Huskies. Ed has his scoring average for the season up to 12.6, check it, 12.1 per contest. Gets the plus one to go here. Creases the lead up to five. And Ed's got five in the ball game. Bain will check out. Sorrell will check in. So it is Harris, Bogues, Como, Fitzgerald, and Sorrell. Five on the floor for SFA. A little pressure in the backcourt, trapping defense by the Huskies, but the Lumberjacks get it across. Bogues, left angle, going to drive in on Bonds, take it down to the baseline, kick it around the arc, back to Como, right side for a three, and he got it. Como left wide open, and he drills the three from the right wing. The Huskies come back the other way, down low to Hart, feeds it 
to McKenzie. The ball was tipped, but Phillips saves it underneath. He goes in, won't go, but he's going to be fouled. And it's going to be Sorrell that picks up the, sh the foul. That will be free throws for Philip McKenzie. And his first one is too strong. McKenzie on the season, a 77% free throw shooter. Phillips started the first 17 games of the year, and now these last four, four in a row now, he's come off the bench. With Dalton getting the start, second free throw no good as well, but the rebound tipped and controlled by the Huskies. McKenzie will get it to Osuji, out to DeBose, a three from the right angle, and he got it to go. Ian DeBose with his second tray of the night. The Huskies increase the lead back up to five. Ian with eight now. He's had a couple of games where the opponents have really keyed on him to keep him off the scoreboard. His scoring average has dipped a little the last two games, but it's good to see him off to a quick start here. Almost lost by Harris on the dribble. McKenzie has him picked up. Kick it right side to Como. Back cross court to Harris. A three from the left wing. Off the iron won't go, but Fitzgerald underneath. To put it up and in, nice follow by the big guy, the transfer from A&M. And he's got six now, and they're back to within three. Uh, Bonds tries to drive in on Fitzgerald, and he's stripped. They go to the floor for it, and the ball is tied up down low, and it's going to be SFA basketball. Osuji and Bonds trying to argue that Bonds was fouled in order for Fitzgerald to come up with the basketball. And then the SFA is arguing that Bonds landed on top of Fitzgerald after he stole the basketball from him. It should have had a foul called on him there. So neither team completely satisfied by that call. Here's Neiman and out top for a three. Going to come up short. He checked in on the last stoppage, and so did Dalton for the Huskies, and he grabs a rebound. Get it to DeBose, and DeBose goes baseline intended for Bonds, but Bonds had cut in toward the hoop, and the pass is overthrown and out of bounds. Turnover gives it back to SFA. Still a 32-29 lead for the Huskies, and we're down to four and a half minutes to go till halftime. Harris will drive in. He goes left side, and... Gets a friendly roll off the iron and off the window. Here's a tip and a strip by Harris. Out of Bond's hand. He's going to go back the other way, and we're going to get a blocking foul called on Dalton. The bucket will count, and Harris gives SFA the lead back and will go to the line for a plus one. Ty Dalton draws his second foul. And it'll send Kevon Harris to the line, and he misses from the free throw line. And the lead stays at one for SFA. Oddest Walker at the table. He will check in for SFA on the next stoppage. Osuji with the basketball in the front court for the Huskies. Picked up by Como, and we're going to get a whistle. The foul is going to be called on Como. And it'll be a one and one for Osuji. Como hit the deck, lost his footing there. But the foul will send Osuji to the free throw line. Walker does check in. And Osuji gets the first free throw to go. He'll have one more to come. Osuji, an 81% shooter for the season. He's got his first point of the evening tonight. Osuji, over the last three games that he has started, has averaged 15 points per contest. He set a couple of career highs in his last couple of starts. The second free throw rattles around, won't stay down. So we're tied up with four minutes to go at 33 apiece. Harris back into the front court, dribbles 
to the right angle. Now pulls up. He's going to fire a three. Short. The rebound comes all the way back out to him. Osuji almost stole it, but Harris saves it. Gets it to Terrell, and Terrell throws it away. Stolen by DuBose, and Ian will bring it up. Into the front court. Pull-up jumper from 15. Won't go, and the rebound lost out of bounds by the Lumberjacks. It'll be Huskies basketball, but we've got a timeout again on the floor. 3.35 to go here in the first half of play. The Huskies and SFA all knotted up at 33 on the Husky Sports Network and HBU TV. You can always count on Houston Federal Credit Union to be there for you because once a member, always a member. Take advantage of all their products and services to help you in all your financial milestones, such as purchasing your first car, planning your dream wedding, buying a home, and planning for retirement. Stop by any of their convenient locations or visit their website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. I am strong. I won't give up. I put my heart into the game. I learned from my mistakes. Focus. Determination. Confidence. I trust my gut. No limits. Preparation. Dedication. Leadership. I want to make my team and family proud. Be an inspiration for other girls who like sports. Join Join the movement. movement. Under Armour. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Welcome back into Sharp Gym here on the campus of Houston Baptist University. Three minutes, 35 seconds till halftime. Want to invite you to stick with us at the half. Huskies halftime report coming up. We'll recap the first half statistics. Here's Dalton on the inbounds. Puts up a three, missed everything with an air ball, and the rebound lost by Hart out of bounds. It'll go over to SFA, 331 to go. We'll also check the Southland Conference scoreboard, give you an update on the women's game going on in Nacogdoches tonight. HBU women taking on the Lady Jacks of SFA up on their home floor. Here's Fitzgerald with a jumper from the top of the arc for SFA. It won't go and bonds with the board for the Huskies. Into the corner, a jumper from three for Osuji. Won't go and bonds grabs a rebound. They'll have a new shot clock as Braxton will back it out. Lob it down low, intended for hard, tipped and stolen away. Bain on the run, three on one. Lob it across to Bain from Bogues and Bogues gets the alley-oop feed and Bain gets the bucket on the dunk. And SFA is back up by two, 35-33. 2 40 to go till halftime now. And Ian DuBose has the basketball left side angle. He's going to drive inside the arc, pull up and pop from the left wing. 15-footer from the angle. He gets his shot to go. Ian's got 10, and the Huskies first player into double digits this evening. Ties us back up at 35 with 2.20 left. Yvonne Harris with the dribble. Right side, kick it left angle to Bogues. Suji on him. Gruyich, who checked in during the timeout, has it out top. Feeds it to Bain. Down low to Fitzgerald. Baseline turnaround push shot. Won't go. Hart there to clean it up and get it off to Dalton. Tie on the run. Going to drive in. Spin around in the paint. Puts it up. Off the iron. Won't go. Rebound by Hart. He tries to follow it. And he's going to be fouled. And let's see who they're going to get. I think they're going to get Gruyich. It is Jovan Gruyich. That will be his third. And that's the 10th team foul on SFA. So this is a shooting foul anyway. Two free throws for Ed Hart, but double bonus the rest of the way. And that's just 115 seconds to go in the first half. Hart's first free throw, too strong off the back iron. Huskies have been fairly good at the line the last couple of games, but... Tonight now they are 7 of 11 early on here. Hart with one more too strong again. A little bit of a line drive on that shot. And it rattles out. We're still knotted up at 35. 
Minute 45 to go as Harris has the dribble, right side angle, beyond the arc, kicks it left side to Como, bounce pass in low to Bain, back to the basket. He's going to spin around in the paint, put it up, won't go. And Oliver Lynch Daniels there to clean the glass and take it up ahead. Give it off to Osuji, left side, lay it in for two, and he's fouled. Nice feed from Ali. And Suge with the bucket will go to the line for the plus one opportunity. And the Huskies back on top by two with exactly 90 seconds to go in the first half. Suji now with three points in the ball game. Fitzgerald is back in. Baines will check out. Neiman and also back out on the floor. And the free throw from Osuji is good. He will check out after making the free throw, and Jalen Gates will check in for him. Gates with eight points off the bench already this evening. He'll pick up Como as he comes across the timeline with the basketball. Dribbles to the middle, leave it for Fitzgerald. Pump fake, drives down right side, puts it up. Off the iron, won't go, and the rebound cleared by Ed Hart for the Huskies. Outlet to DuBose, and he'll bring it back up. Angles to the middle, back out on the left angle for Ollie Lynch Daniels. A three off the iron, won't go, and Fitzgerald with a rebound for SFA. Off to Harris, and Harris up the floor. Leave it off for Neiman, and down right side. Cut off, going to kick it back out. Harris wide open for a three. Long range, but he gets it to go from way out beyond the arc, about a three-foot distance outside the three-point line, and he ties us back up at 38. 40 seconds to go, Ed Hart way out top. Double teamed out there, and now finds Jay Gates. He's going to fire up a long-range three, and Jay with the answer gets the three to go. Gates now with 11, takes over the scoring honors here for the Huskies, and we're down to the final 22 seconds, about a second differential shot clock to game clock. Bogues dribbles way out top. They will have an opportunity effectively here for the last shot, but Bogues is going to drive in, and we're going to get a blocking foul called on Ed Hart. He tried to set and draw the charge, but Jeff Malum underneath the basket called him for the block, and it'll send Bogues to the free throw line. Fifth team foul on the Huskies, but free throws to come for Shannon Bogues. Bogues saying he needs a minute. Now he's going to walk his way back to the opposite end of the floor, head to the free throw line, and he'll have two free throws here with 5.5 seconds to go in the first half. First one from Shannon Bogues is good. His first free throw of the night. They're now three of six at the line. Bogues one for one. Nathan Bain two of two. Kevon Harris 0 for three at the stripe. Fitzgerald checks out. Sorrell checks in for him. Second free throw no good. Rebound tipped around. It's going to be loose and out of bounds. It's going to be off of Ian DeBose. With 1.2 seconds to go, a lot of fingertips all over that basketball, but nobody could get a handle on it. So Kevon Harris will go to the baseline, and SFA will have one more opportunity here before the buzzer. They get it inbound to Sorrell, tipped and stolen by ba Dalton, and he got it off to Jay Gates, but... Not in time for a pre-buzzer shot, and we'll go to the locker room with the Huskies holding a two-point lead. It's 41-39 to 39 through the first 20 minutes of play. We're going to take a timeout, but stay with us when we come back. We'll have the Huskies halftime report, take a look at the first half stats, check the conference scoreboard, and update you on the Huskies women's game against the Lady Jacks of SFA when we return on the Husky Sports Network and SFA TV. 
HBU TV. At Firehouse Subs, subs are hot, hearty, and extraordinary. Every sub helps provide life-saving equipment for first responders. So more people eating at Firehouse Subs means more life-saving equipment donated to first responders. If you're going to have a sub, have one that makes a difference. Try the new spicy Cajun chicken sub with grilled chicken breast, just $5.55 for a medium. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. The body is incredibly powerful. It's so nimble and fluid, but sometimes we push it too far. That's when you need the strength of Memorial Hermann and our body of affiliated orthopedic specialists. With our renowned Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, they not only get your body back to where it was, they get it to go further. It's what makes us more than just hospitals. We are a body of experts. Memorial Hermann, advancing health. Tammy and I have been going steady since high school. Tammy and Tommy, two peas in a pod, as they say. We have all the same friends. We like all the same things. I mean, we practically even have the same name. But there's one thing we could just never agree on. Soda. <sighs> I have been begging him all these years to just try Pepsi, and I knew he would change his tune. Yeah, yeah. So, finally, I had him take the Pepsi taste challenge. And go on, tell him what you told me, Tommy. <sighs> I'm a Pepsi man. Mmm. <sighs> right? Gosh, isn't Pepsi so good? I tell you what, I don't know why I didn't try it sooner. Me neither. It's so crisp and refreshing and bubbly. Like me. Like you. I'm always right. She's always right. <laughs> All across the South, people are choosing the great taste of Pepsi. Take the Pepsi Taste Challenge and let your taste decide. It would be great if human beings were great at being human. And if all of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men, it would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known. And if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything and being greedy was absurd. Spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man. And the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. How fast you were going, son? Call me Ed. Do you know how fast you were going, Ed? You mean exactly? Yes, exactly. No, not exactly. How fast? Fast. Fast, sir. You were going very fast. Fast is my job, officer. Fast is your job? Yes, sir. What kind of job? I deliver, sir. What do you deliver? The world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. I thought Jimmy John's had the world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. Jimmy John's does have the world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. So you deliver for Jimmy John's? I deliver for Jimmy John's. So do you always deliver fast? I always deliver fast. How fast? I deliver subs so fast you freak. It's not smart to freak a cop, son. You didn't order Jimmy John's sub, sir. So if I did order a Jimmy John's sub, when would I get it? Now. What if I don't want it now? Then call later. Or I can pick it up myself. Or you can pick it up yourself. Because I'm pretty fast too. I'm sure you are, sir. Very fast. I believe you, sir. Faster than you. No way, sir. Way faster. In your dreams. You dissing me, son. No, sir. I'm polite. Fast and polite. Very polite and very, very fast. Is that a challenge, son? No, sir. It's a fact. Let's burn rubber, kid. It wouldn't be fair. Why not? You've got a fully blown V8 Camaro with slicks and headers. So? I've got a 10-speed bike. I'll let you off with a warning. Jimmy John Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. IBW wants to build Houston. Office buildings, health care centers, information data centers, airports, and heck, we would like to build everything. Our commitment is all our electricians are Americans with a birth certificate, social security card, high school diploma, and drug tested. Plus, we're trained at an accredited five-year electrical school. We're career American people. My question, does this even matter? Visit WhoBuildsHouston.com. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. At Holiday Inn Express, we can't guarantee that you'll be able to contain yourself at our breakfast bar. Morning, egg white omelet. Sup, lady bacon. Fruit. There it is. But we can guarantee that you'll get the best price when you book with us. Holiday Inn Express. Be the readiest. The real story is I'm in here every morning. And, uh... 
have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. So. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> It's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> when you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HBU Athletics. This is Ron Koschel. You're listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Here at halftime of our game between your HBU Huskies and the SFA Lumberjacks. The Huskies hold a two-point lead here at Sharp Gym tonight, 41-39. I'm Lonnie King. Welcome into the Huskies halftime report. Let's take a look at the first half stats here. The Huskies, after a one of eight start to the night from the floor, come back and wind up 14 of 35 overall, 40% from the floor in the first 20 minutes. That includes 5 of 11 from the three-point line and 8 of 13 at the free-throw line for 62%. Meanwhile, Stephen F. Austin was a little more consistent throughout the period uh, in shooting from the floor, 17 of 35, a ride under 50%, 48% we'll call it. They were 2 of 10, though, from the three-point line for 20% and only 3 of 7 from the free throw line, 43% there. So the three-point shooting for the Huskies combined with the the free throw shooting for both teams uh, helped to give the Huskies the two-point advantage here for HBU from the three-point line. Ian DeBose went two for two in the first half. Jalen Gates went two of three. Those were the big guns uh, for HBU. But Ty Dalton also fired in a three to account for the five three-pointers the Huskies had. Kevon Harris for SFA was one of five from the arc, and John Como one of one, the only two Lumberjacks that made the long-distance dial-ups in the first half. Rebounding-wise, the Huskies hold a five-board edge overall, 25-20. They've got a four-rebound advantage on the offensive end, 10-6, and a one-board edge on the defensive side, 15-14 there. And so second-chance points, the slide edge goes to HBU, 8-6 advantage on the second chance for the Huskies. Points in the paint, though, is where HBU has done well the last couple of games but are being outscored tonight down inside the paint. SFA with 26 of their 39 points inside the lane, and the Huskies with just 12 of their 41 in the paint. The Huskies relying more on the three-pointer in the first half tonight where they've gone a lot more to the inside game over the last two or three contests, especially the last two wins that they've had against Incarnate Word and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. But tonight, gone back to the perimeter shooting, and to this point, it's spotted them out to the two-point lead. So we'll see if that holds up or if they try to go back to the inside game in the second half. But right now, they're outscored 26-12 in the first 20 minutes of play in the paint. Turnovers, the Huskies have turned it over nine times. SFA has turned it over seven times. SFA has turned the uh, the nine Husky turnovers into 12 points off turnovers. And HBU has turned the seven turnovers by the Lumberjacks into seven points on the scoreboard themselves. The bench uh, edge belongs to HBU. They've gotten contributions from Jalen Gates, Ben Yoloko, and Oliver Lynch Daniels for 19 points. Jalen Gates, the big number there with 11 points. He leads the scoring for the Huskies in the first half with those 11. Ian DeBose in the starting lineup tonight, of course, has 10 to add to Jay Gates' 11. Uh, They are joined by five from Ed Hart, six from Ben Yoloko off the bench, 
Uh, four from Stephen Osuji, three from Ty Dalton, and two from Oliver Lynch Daniels off the bench. For SFA, 13 points tonight from Kevon Harris, 6 of 12 shooting, 1 of 5 from the three-point line, 0 of 3 from the free-throw line, though. Harris also has three rebounds in the first half and three assists. Following him, Nathan Bain has eight, six from Devontae Fitzgerald, three apiece, or three, excuse me, from John Como off the bench. He's got the only three off the bench for SFA tonight. And then two from Salmuli Niemannen to round out the scoring for the Lumberjacks. Uh, let's see. Mitchell Sorrell, Otis Walker, Jovan Grujic, three players off the bench for Kyle Keller tonight. But uh, they got floor time, did not score in that first half of play for the Huskies. Uh, Braxton Bonds played 13 minutes of the first half, did not score. Philip McKenzie had eight minutes of floor time, did not score for the Huskies. So that's where we are here at the midway point, a two-point advantage for the Huskies. Biggest lead for SFA was six early in the first half, and HBU has also had a six-point lead later on, about eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. So neither team able to open up a big advantage either way. And right now it's a two-point game. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll look around the conference at the scoreboard tonight and then also update you on the game going on between the Huskies women and the Lady Jacks of SFA in Nacogdoches when we return on the Huskies halftime report. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus, extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. At Raising Cane's, we believe in one love, quality chicken finger meals. But creating one love is no simple task. Everything has to be served hot and fresh, not just hot. We use only 100% premium chicken tenderloins, guaranteeing a 0% chance of leftovers. We insist on the best ingredients for our fries, like potatoes. And, well, we can keep talking quality, or you can just eat it. Raising Cane's, one love. Coming to you in Living Cola. Pepsi Cola, from the wonderful folks who put the R in Cola. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Back here at Sharp Gym, just about set to go with second half action. But as we wind up the Huskies halftime report, let's look around the scoreboard in the Southland Conference tonight. Other games going on, Sam Houston State hosting McNeese State. A game has about six minutes to go in the second half, 65-54. Sam Houston State trying to go for their 10th straight win without a loss in Southland Conference play tonight. And they have an 11-point lead at home. New Orleans is in Natchitoches tonight to take on Northwestern State about halfway through the second half. They've got a five-point lead, 52-47. Texas A&M Corpus Christi back home tonight after traveling here over the weekend, hosting southeastern Louisiana. They're tied up just about to go into the half, 32-32. And then one other game at the half right now over in Beaumont, Abilene Christian 
with the two-point lead over the Lamar Cardinals, 33-31. Donna Finney's women's team is up in Nacogdoches this evening, and they are in the fourth quarter of play up there, and it is a nine-point lead for SFA's Lady Jacks, 59-50, uh, with about 4.16 to go in that contest. So a little bit of a hill to climb over the last half of the fourth quarter there. And we'll keep tabs on the women's game there. Hopefully a big finish for the Huskies. HBU with the basketball here as we're ready to go. And the second half is underway. Braxton Bonds going to bounce past Ian DeBose. DeBose tried to go up with a dunk. Couldn't get it to go. He was cut off. On the baseline, lost the basketball, saved by Osuji, and Osuji is fouled on the baseline. That'll be the first foul of the second half. And I believe it was charged to Kevon Harris. We'll check that. Goes to Bonds on the baseline, out to Dalton. Dalton left side, kicks it back out to DeBose. He'll drive in. Feed it in the paint to Hart. A little turnaround hook. Spins out. Won't go. And the rebound cleared by Bain for the Lumberjacks. Bogues will bring it up. He's picked up by Bonds. Goes to the right. Bonds stays with him. Slides back to the middle. Leave it for Neiman and down low. Into the corner to Harris. Drive down. Left side to the rack. Won't go. <clears throat> but a late whistle. And they're going to get Ed Hart for the personal. It will send Kevon Harris to the free throw line for Hart. That'll be his second. First foul of the second half on the Huskies. And Harris is 0 for 3 at the line tonight, but he gets the first one here. And brings him back to within one. The first point of the second half belongs to SFA. Harris' second free throw rattles and drops down through. He gets them both here. His first made charity shots of the night, and he's 2 of 5, and we're tied up at 41. Bonds reverses himself, going to drive in, loses it. Uh, got it to go up, actually, and it spun around the iron. I thought it looked for a minute like he lost it off his fingertips, but he was actually just trying to push it toward the basket with a reversal. And it's knocked out of bounds. The Huskies bailed out there as that one got away from Bonds and did not go, but they get their second chance after the ball goes out of bounds. Osuji out top, gets a screen from Hart, sets up right side. Neiman and comes out and picks him up, drives in, leave it on the baseline for DuBose, and he'll dunk it down through. The feed from Osuji and the finish from Ian DuBose. Suge now has six assists in this ball game. DuBose with a dozen points. Kevon Harris, left side, going to drive in on DuBose. Kick it around to Boggs, right side for a three. Won't go, and Bonds underneath is going to grab the board for the Huskies. He'll get it back up the floor, leave it for Dalton. Left side, going to drive in, cut off on the baseline, kick it back out on the wing. DuBose feeds it down in the blocks to Hart, and he's going to be called for an offensive foul. Ron Cottrell up off the bench was trying to tell Danny Chance, the official who made the call there, that felt like Fitzgerald was inside the semicircle underneath the basket. It should have been an automatic blocking foul, but as is usually the case, that goes to no avail. And the Lumberjacks bring it back up the floor. Bogues has it to Bain, right side. Goes back out top to Bogues, and he'll angle to the left. Picked up by Bonds. Drives it into the middle. Puts it up. Won't go with the scoop. And the rebound cleared by Ty Dalton. Almost lost it off his foot, but saves it to Osuji. Osuji will drive into the middle. Leave it for Bonds. Tipped away, and it's stolen by Bain. Outlet up ahead to Bogues on the run, and he gets by Dalton. Goes. And Dalton's going to be charged with a foul on the move. It'll be the third on tie, second on the Huskies. 
We're knotted up at 43, and the free throw attempt to come for Shannon Bogues. A little too much traffic in the middle there as Osuji drove in. He tried to feed it to Bonds, and there were just hands in the passing lane there. Bain got a hand on it, tipped it, and then in one fluid motion, picked it out of midair and floated it up ahead to Bogues, who was behind Dalton. Got the bucket and now gets the free throw for the old-fashioned three-point play. And SFA is back up by one, and now we've got a whistle on the opposite end as Niemann is going to draw a foul away from the basketball. Ben Uloco has checked in for Ed Hart. So he drew the foul on Neiman. And now here's a drive by Dalton. He'll go to the rack and lay it up and in for two. Tie with five now. And the Huskies back up by a point, 45-44. Bain back the other way. Misses a point blank layup. And Dalton with the rebound. But stolen from behind by Baines. And now stolen back by DeBose. Up ahead, Osuji drives baseline right, drives it in and lays it off the window. Osuji turn about fair play as he'll get the feed for the assist for DeBose. Osuji now has five. Huskies back up by three. Bain lobs it down low. Neiman and right side knocked away by Dalton, and it goes off the foot of Neiman and out of bounds back to the Huskies. 16.26 to go in the second half. Shannon Bogues trying to point out some moisture on the floor to the officials. So we're going to hold up the inbounds play here for the Huskies as they will take care of it in the Huskies' backcourt. And the fans cheer the effort there. And the Huskies bring it up into the forecourt. Osuji with the basketball way out top to Yoloko. Ben will hand it off to Bonds. Bonds is driving in, and he spins it around the iron and rolls it down through. Got it to go. Braxton with his first points of the ball game. And the follow missed by Bogues back the other way. Osuji's going to have it blocked. And we've either got a foul or a goaltend here. Let's see. They're going to call foul on Harris. No goaltending. But we've got a timeout on the floor. Free throws to come. And we'll see who is going to get the shots. Ron Cottrell is trying to. Have a discussion with the officials as his team heads to the bench for the timeout. And they've got a five-point lead here on the Husky Sports Network and HBU TV. At Memorial Hermann, we're many parts working in harmony, performing more brain and spinal surgeries than anyone in Houston, conducting groundbreaking research at our Mischer Neuroscience Institute, establishing the region's largest network of certified stroke centers. Some might say this makes for an accomplished performance, but to us, it's all in a day's work. Memorial Hermann. Breakthroughs every day. Going to school at Houston Baptist University was an excellent choice. As the official credit union of HBU, Houston Federal Credit Union is focused on helping you to continue to make great choices. HFCU will meet all your financial needs by providing the personal attention and variety of services you deserve. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Steven Osuji will be at the free throw line after drawing the second personal foul on Kevon Harris just before the timeout. Harris Sorrell 
Bogues, Bain, and Como. The five on the floor out of the huddle for SFA. Osuji with the first free throw gets it to go. He is joined by DuBose, Bonds, Dalton, and Yoloko. The five on the floor for Coach Cottrell. Osuji takes the lead up to six with the first free throw, and the second one adds another point. It's 51-44. Suge now with seven points in the game, and the Huskies are up by seven. Como with the dribble into the front court, picked up by Bonds. Screen from Bain. They get it right side to Bogues. He'll drive past Dalton, float it up short, and Yoloko with the board. He'll leave it for Dalton, and Dalton will get it off to Osuji, who brings it up in a hurry. To the paint, to the rack, won't go, but he's going to be fouled. And Suge will go back to the free throw line. Well, we've seen that consistently in these last four games since Osuji has been reinserted into the lineup. Forcing the action, driving, getting to the rack, and getting... Some free throw opportunities in the process, and he gets the first one to go here. Lead is up to eight, 52 to 44. Suji now, five of six and six of seven as he gets them both to go here. It's a nine point advantage for the good guys. 53, 44, 15, 25 to go. Como with the dribble, left side angle. Screen from Baines. He'll try to lob it inside. Stolen away by Ben Yoloko. Off to DeBose. Or to Bonds. He gives it to DeBose. Lay it in off the glass. Got the friendly roll. And there's a foul called as well. It'll be the third on Harris. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 15-13 to go. The Huskies have increased the lead to 11, and Ian DeBose will be at the free throw line when we come back on the Husky Sports Network. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Every visit to Raising Cane's begins with a moment of truth. What to have? Six delicious, fresh, never, ever frozen premium chicken fingers? Four chicken fingers? Or perhaps three delectable chicken fingers? It's a tough one. Ah, we haven't even gotten to the whole coleslaw crinkle fried conundrum of deliciousness. Yeah, take your time, sister. We understand. Raising Cane's, one love. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Got a final in in Southland Conference action tonight. Sam Houston State has won their 10th consecutive Southland Conference game to start their run at 10-0 this season. 77-62 winners over McNeese State up at Johnson Coliseum tonight in Huntsville. So everybody is still chasing an undefeated team at the top of the standings. A free throw from DuBose is good for the Huskies. He's got 14 points now and extends the lead up to a dozen for HBU here. Huskies trying to draw back closer to the 500 mark. Here's Bain for a three from the wing right side, and he drops it down through. Brings him back to within nine, 56-47. Bain's got nine. Bonds with the dribble for the Huskies. Gets it to DeBose. Tries to feed it inside to Yoloko. Saved on the baseline by Sorrell, but thrown out of bounds. It'll be Huskies basketball over in front of the bench. They're going to reset the shot clock to 30 seconds with 14.41 to go in regulation time.
Kyle Keller is trying to argue to the officials that his guy never had possession of the basketball. Jeff Malum is trying to give him an explanation. It will no doubt be unsatisfactory. But the Huskies will get the basketball, and DeBose has it out top. A screen from Bonds, angles to the right, kicks it left side to Osuji. Oddest Walker is checked back in, and he picks up Osuji out on the wing. Suge bounce pass down to Yoloko to the rack, lay it off the glass and in for two. Bain was trying to draw an offensive foul. He hit the deck, but no whistle, and Yoloko with the bucket has eight now. Here's almost the steal. Bain saves it. Good hustle by both teams. Philip McKenzie is checked in for the Huskies. He went after the basketball. They get it across to Harris, right side. He'll back down and spin around and float it off the glass and down through the iron for two. 58-49. Huskies keep seesawing back between that double-digit and nine-point lead. Osuji out top. He's got to look at a three off the mark, but McKenzie with the pick and the follow. Phillip got position underneath, wedged himself under the basket and put it off the glass and down through and back the other way. Here's a block shot by Yuloko. Sorrell went to the rack, though. They're going to call a foul, and Sorrell will get free throws here. Osuji's going to draw the foul. First foul on Suge. Fourth foul on the Huskies here in the second half. 13.25 to go in regulation. Mitchell Sorrell, though, to the free throw line. The freshman from Yates High School. The Yates Lions, one of the premier basketball programs here in town. Osuji goes to the bench. Oliver Lynch Daniels checks in for him. Niemannen checks back in. Otis Walker checks out for SFA. Sorrell with one more free throw to come, and it won't go. Got one out of two. Huskies have a 10-point lead as DuBose clears the glass and gets it off to Bonds. Coach Cottrell shouting instructions out to his team on the floor. Swing it around, left side to Bonds. He'll kick it to McKenzie in the corner. DeBose, a three from the corner, won't go. Rebound tip, controlled by Shannon Bogues for SFA. Outlet up ahead to Harris on the move. Euro step in the paint, and he's going to be fouled on his way to the rack. Now, they may say this was a foul on the floor. They will. That'll be the fifth foul on the team, the first foul on Philip McKenzie in the ball game. And so they'll send Harris to the baseline to inbound it. 25 seconds to go on the shot clock. We're under 13 minutes to go in the game. Harris to Bain. Bain out top. Neiman and gets it down in the blocks. He's double teamed. Tries to kick it cross court. To Harris he goes. Harris will dribble in. Left side into the paint. Strip. And the ball is loose on the floor. Saved by Sorrell. Got to get off a shot at the buzzer. Won't go. The rebound is going to be knocked out of bounds by Sorrell of the Lumberjacks. Good defense by the Huskies there, even though they didn't come up with the loose ball. As the ball floated around, it came out top. SFA had to put up a wild shot to beat the buzzer, and it came up a, a pretty good look, but Huskies... We'll wind up with possession. 60-50, a 10-point lead. Lynch Daniels, left side. Kick it cross court right to Bonds. Back to Ollie. He'll drive in, float it up with the right hand. Ollie in traffic. You heard Judd Kinney in the pregame show talking about if you go in against F.A., you have to expect to finish to contact on these drives, and the Huskies saw that prime example right there and Ollie did the job and they're back up by a dozen 62-50 now a whistle as Bain goes in left side but before the shot goes up we've got a foul on Oliver Lynch Daniels that'll be the third on Ollie the sixth on the Huskies and it'll stop the clock with 11.43 to go Huskies have opened up a 
10-point advantage since halftime, leading by two at the break. They've added 10 and now up by a dozen, 62-50 on the Husky Sports Network and HBU TV. What's on your mind, kid? Make it fast. I'd like to work here at Jimmy John's World's Greatest Gourmet Sandwich Shop, sir. Why do you want to work at Jimmy John's, kid? I'm perfect for Jimmy John's. Doing what? Delivery. Delivery? Delivery. We deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. That's what I heard. What'd you hear? You deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. Then you heard right. I'm a fast study, sir. You know the Jim John's slogan? The Jimmy John's slogan. Jim John's slogan is sub so fast you'll freak. Sub so fast you'll freak is a swell slogan, sir. When people call for a Jimmy John's sandwich, they want it fast. Then I'm your man, sir. How so? Because I'm fast. Fast at what? Fast at everything. Can you deliver fast? I can deliver fast. How fast? I can run at 440 and 220. Minutes? No seconds. That's fast. You deliver before? I delivered newspapers before. Were you fast? Very fast. How fast? Fast. People got tomorrow's paper today. That's fast. So do I have the job? Not so fast. How do I know you're not just some fast talker? I can get your references. When? Now. These are good references. Thank you. But at Jimmy John's, you got to be more than fast. More than fast. you got to be polite. Fast and polite. Fast and polite. I can do fast and polite. Okay, give me some time to think it over. Okay. Okay, I've thought it over. When can you start? Now. Now it's good. What's your name, kid? Stefan Avalavadopoulos. Too long. How about Ed? That's fine. Welcome aboard, Ed. Jimmy John's Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Huskies have kept up the hot shooting here to start the second half. They finished hitting 13 of their final 27 shots in the first half, and they're even hotter here to start the second half. Eight for 13 from the floor, five of five at the free throw line. SFA just three of nine from the yard. Here's a steal on the inbounds play, and we're going to have a whistle and a foul. Niemannen is going to grab Bonds from behind. As a Husky stole the inbounds pass, and Bonds was off on the run. Not a breakaway, so it'll be inbounds over across the way. Lynch Daniels will get it inbounds to Bonds. That's the sixth team foul on SFA here in the second half. Both teams with six now. Both teams will be in the bonus on the next foul for the other side. Here's a jumper from Lynch Daniels. Won't go in the rebound cleared by Harris. He'll bring it up in a hurry. Drives left side, goes off the glass and down through for two. Kevon Harris with 18 points. Check at 19 now. And cuts the lead back down to 10 for the Huskies. 62-52, Bonds with the drive, right side, short, off the iron, and the rebound's going to be bumped out of bounds. Bogues with a good hustle. Leaps up over the Husky bench into the stands. Behind Nick Jones and Andre Charles over there. It'll be Huskies basketball, though, with a new shot clock as we roll down to the 11-minute mark. Lynch Daniels, right side, going to drive in, off the iron, won't go down. Rebound this time by Sorrell for the Jacks. He'll get the outlet to Bogues, and Bogues will bring it up. Angles to the left side. Pull up inside the arc, put up a jumper. Too strong off the back iron. Sorrell with the rebound, but stolen away by Dalton. Saved by Yuloko to Lynch Daniels, and the Huskies come out with it. Holly up ahead to Bonds. Bonds going to drive in, dish it out on the wing to Dalton, drive the baseline right. Backs it out, bounce pass down low to Yuloko, went up, blocked from behind by Baines. It'll be out of bounds off of SFA. Good ball movement by the Huskies. Good recovery defense there by Nathan Bain, though, to knock the ball out of bounds. The Huskies will have 15 on the shot clock as they get it inbounds. Inside they go to Dalton. He has it blocked by Sorrell as he tried to reverse it up and under. Osuji will check back in. It goes out of bounds off of SFA. Bonds is going to get a breather. So Suge will join Ali Lynch Daniels in the backcourt, and he'll go to the baseline to inbound the ball and lobs it out top to Yoloko. He'll get it to Lynch Daniels. Back to Osuji, down to five on the shot clock. Stevens going to drive in, left side, scoops it up. A little reverse English on it. It wouldn't go, though, and Fitzgerald clears the glass for SFA. Off to Bogues. Bogues into the right corner to Bain. Bain tries to go out top, tipped by Dalton, but saved by Fitzgerald. Drives down right angle, puts up the jumper, won't go, but Harris there to follow and put it back up and in. Harris now with the last four for SFA. He's got 21, and they're back to within eight. 62-54. Ollie Lynch Daniels with the yo-yo out top. 
Screen from McKenzie. Drives down right side. Cut off on the baseline. Back out on the wing. Goes to Dalton. He will drive in. Gets by a defender. Puts it up. He's going to be fouled by Sorrell. Going to the rack. And Ty will go to the free throw line on the seventh foul against SFA here. It's going to be a shooting foul anyway. Two free throws to come for Dalton. Sorrell picks up number two. With 9.20 to go, HBU's in the bonus the rest of the way. Ty gets the first free throw to go. Dalton, two of seven from the floor tonight, one of three from outside the arc. That was his first free throw of the night. Ed Hart checks back in. And Ben Yoloko will go back to the bench. Dalton gets the second free throw as well. Gets us back out to a 10-point differential, 64-54. The Huskies up by 10. And Bain has the dribble in the front court for SFA. Lobs it back out high to Harris, back near the midcourt stripe. Lynch Daniels has him. Screen from Fitzgerald, but Harris will go down. Left side, spin around underneath, and goes off the window for two. Very athletic move there, and we've seen he's got the ability to do that. He's got their last six points. He's up to 23 now, and has them back to within eight, 64-56. Osuji going to go into the corner. Ollie Lance Daniels for a three, comes up short. Ed Hart right underneath to try and grab the board, and then came off at an awkward angle, and he just could not get a grip on the loose ball. So it'll go out of bounds off the Huskies. Ian DeBose up off the bench. We'll check back in. Philip McKenzie will check out. And Shannon Bogues will let the ball roll as he brings it up into the forecourt. Preserve a couple of seconds on the clock there. Now loses his dribble, finds Baines out top. Bain out top, though, who drives in. Has it stolen away by Dalton. Outlet up ahead. Lynch Daniels underneath to DeBose, and he couldn't control, and so he's going to have to back it out. Still plenty of time on the shot clock, but had the advantage in numbers there, and they couldn't take advantage of it. Here's DuBose Drives in, left side. Comes up short. The rebound by Harris, and we're going to get a whistle and a timeout called by Harris on the floor. And SFA... We'll get a 30-second timeout here. Oh, it's going to be a full timeout. We'll hang on to it right here, though. We've got an update from Nacogdoches, and so we'll pass that on to you. Donna Finney's squad up on the road tonight. Gave it a valiant effort, but come up on the short end of a 65-53 score in women's action tonight. Lady Jacks of SFA defend their home floor up at William R. Johnson Coliseum in Nacogdoches. HBU led tonight by Sophie Taylor, who had 15 points on 6 of 14 shooting, 3 of 9 from the three-point line. Huskies, and it would be interesting to talk to Donna Finney about this. Maybe we'll get to ask her about it on Wednesday. But the Huskies only got to the free-throw line three times tonight. Three of three. Megan Valdez Crater got the three free throw attempts that they had. She finished up with 10 points for the evening. She and Taylor, the only Huskies in double digits, but they only drew, let's see, well, they drew 14 fouls on SFA as a team tonight, but just three free throws out of those fouls tonight. SFA was 12 of 17 at the free throw line this evening. So plus nine there, and they win by a dozen. The Huskies had a halftime lead, but come up short in the second half. Here at 64-56, the men with an eight-point advantage, and SFA brings the ball into the front court. Bain is going to be bumped as he tried to drive to the right. Going to call a foul on Ian DeBose. Ian's trying to say he was pushed into Bain by Kevon Harris. 
They're going to say the foul is on DuBose, and they're going to send Harris to the free throw line for a one and one. Seventh foul on the Huskies, so both teams are in the bonus now the rest of the way. Free, and that's just his first foul. And Harris gets the first free throw to go here. He missed his first three tonight, but now has hit his last three. He's three of six with one more to come here. And he has their last eight points in a row. 64-58. Harris is single-handedly keeping SFA close here. So we roll down to seven and a half minutes left in regulation time. Ollie Lynch Daniels goes right side to do uh, to Osuji. He feeds it down low to Hart, and Hart finds a slot in between a couple of defenders and gets the friendly roll off the iron and down through, and the Huskies are back up by eight. <coughs> Bogues to Fitzgerald into the corner to Bain, a three high off the iron. Shot missed, and Dalton with the rebound. He'll hang on to it, and Kevon Harris comes up limping down low to Lynch Daniels, and Ollie is going to be fouled on his way to the rack. Foul's going to be on Shannon Bogues, number two on Bogues. Harris is still trying to walk off an injury. And now the officials are going to come over and look at the monitor. We'll see what they're looking for. They're going to look at the possession down there where Dalton and Harris got tangled up. Make sure nothing was a foul there. And so they'll get a look at it. Might be kind of hard to see as Dalton and Harris went after the loose ball after the missed shot from Bain. Dalton came away with it. The ball was loose on the floor for a minute and Jeff Malum and Marcus Pettigrew taking a look at the replay right here in front of us. Reminder that the Huskies are off this Saturday. Got a buy in the schedule the next time around. So no weekend action for either the men's or women's team. The men will be in action next Wednesday night in Conway, Arkansas, as we will travel up to Central Arkansas for a midweek game there. Donna Finney's women's squad will be here at Sharp Gym hosting the Sugar Bears of Central Arkansas. It'll be the last long road trip for the Huskies. They had three right at the outset of di uh, district of conference season this year. Now one more to Conway. Next Wednesday, and we'll have all the play-by-play -play for you. 7 o'clock start time, 6.40 with the pregame show on the Husky Sports Network. That'll be radio, audio only. Oliver Lynch Daniels at the free throw line as Jeff Mallon and Marcus Pettigrew determined that there was no nefarious activity down on the opposite end of the floor. And the first free throw from Lynch Daniels was good. The second as well. Ollie has six now, and the Huskies are back up by 10, 68-58. Seven minutes to go in this ball game. Bain, right side with the dribble. Cut off by Dalton. Feeds it at the elbow to Fitzgerald. Back to Bain. Tries to drive in, tipped away, and stolen by Hart. Hart will give it off to Dalton, and Dalton will bring it up. Not in a hurry, and he'll leave it for Osuji way out top. Huskies with a 10-point lead. Can afford to be deliberate here on each possession. 
Osuji, no look pass down to Hart. He's going to be fouled by Fitzgerald. The shot was blocked. Good job by Fitzgerald to get up in the air and get a hand on the basketball, but he got Hart over the back with the body. And that's what Jeff Malum is explaining to Devontae Fitzgerald. He did get a clean block with the hand on top of the ball, but Hart will go to the free throw line with 6.26 to go, and he gets the first free throw to go here. Lead is back up to 11. Ed now with eight points in the ball game for HBU. Huskies trying for just their second win ever over SFA, and there's a miss on the free throw, and the rebound is loose, tipped out by Oliver Lynch Daniels. It'll be SFA basketball. Too early to count the chickens, though, right now. Still an 11-point lead, though. 6.20 to go. Bogues out top, right side to Bain. Bain will look inside, drive down, goes past. Hart put it up, lost control. Taken away by Dalton. Almost stolen back by Fitzgerald, but saved on the baseline by DuBose. And the Huskies will maintain possession with 20 on the shot clock. Ian will dribble way back out top. He's marked by Bogues, and Ian's going to lose it off his foot. Rolls into the backcourt, and... That'll be a backcourt violation on the Huskies. Ian knew it, too. He didn't want to pick it up, but nobody else on the Huskies could either. It was just a matter of time that it would wind up in possession of SFA, and Como will come to the near sideline down to our right to inbound the basketball. And now... Just before they were ready to inbound the basketball, they're asking for some more housekeeping. A lot of moisture on the floor. A lot of guys expending a lot of energy tonight. Warm and humid week in Houston, especially for the middle of February. That all is about to change here in about the next 24 hours, by the way. It's supposed to get cold again here in town, but not yet tonight. AC is on in the building, and there's a lot of sweat being left on the floor. Fitzgerald with the basketball down low, tries to go up over Hart, and he does with the right hand. Nice move, spin around, and he floats it up and in from the right side. Fitzgerald now with eight. They're back to within nine, 69, 65 and a half to go. Lynch Daniels to the left angle, feeds it to Osuji. He'll look inside with a bounce pass to Hart. Back to Osuji on the wing. He'll dribble back out to the top. Still eight on the shot clock. Time winding down, though, as Suge drives in. He'll go to the rack, float it up off the glass and down through for two. Steven Osuji in double digits now has 11 and the Huskies are back up by 11 with five minutes to go. Fitzgerald going to try to answer with the three. No good, but the rebound put back on the tip followed by Sorrell. Mitchell Sorrell with the bucket. He's got four, or check it now, three. Cuts it back down to nine. Dalton back the other way. Comes up short on the run. Hit the deck, but the rebound pulled down by SFA, and Harris brings it back up. Almost stolen by Osuji, but Suj picks up the foul. Tried to get a hand in there on Harris, but got him on the elbow instead. Eighth foul on the Huskies. It'll be one and one for Harris. He will go to the line. Bogues will check back in for Como. Oddest Walker. Jalen Gates checks in. Braxton Bonds does as well. Ollie Lynch Daniels and Stephen Osuji will check out for the Huskies. Kevon Harris at the free throw line. Gets the first one to go. 71-63. Huskies with an eight-point advantage. They've managed to Extend the lead after halftime here and keep SFA at arm's length. We're down to four minutes, 36 seconds left, and the lead is down to seven. 
as the second free throw is good as well. 71-64 now as the Huskies bring it back up. Bonds with the dribble. He's trapped in the corner, and the ball is tipped by Walker, knocked out of bounds. Huskies basketball with 18 on the shot clock. Got to watch that double team and that half-court trap if you're HBU. Bonds was looking for some, somebody in a friendly jersey to help him out there. Now gets it inbounds to DeBose. Will dribble down to the baseline. He's going to be fouled as he goes inside. And it's going to be charged to Walker. That'll be his, or no, check it. That is on Harris. Harris picks up his fourth. And it'll send Ian DeBose to the free throw line. Double bonus now the rest of the way for the Huskies with 4.18 to go. But Ian comes up short on the first one. DeBose tonight, 15 points. DeBose second free throw is good. One out of two for Ian that trip to the line. He's two for three tonight and has 16 now. Leading scorer for the Huskies, Harris leads the way of all scores, 27 points tonight. And he's got the basketball with the dribble. Picked up now by Gates, and Gates is going to get him with the hands extended. That'll be a push and a foul on Jay Gates. It'll send Harris to the free throw line, but it stops the clock with exactly four minutes to go in our game. Huskies with... An eight-point lead, 72-64. We've got a timeout on the floor on the Husky Sports Network and HBU-TV. It would be great if human beings were great at being human. And if all of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men. It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known. And if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man and the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Down to the final four minutes of our game here, the Huskies with an eight point lead heading into this home stretch. They'll send Hart, Dalton, DuBose. Gates and Bonds out onto the floor, out of the timeout. Kevon Harris will be at the free throw line for SFA. 27 points for Harris tonight. And he'll get the front end of the one and one to go here. That was the ninth foul on the Huskies just before the timeout. So the next one will be automatic. Two shots for SFA. Harris gets them both here, so he's got 29 now. Walker will check out. Bain will check back in after the free throws there. It's back to a six-point game, and we roll under four minutes to go as Bonds brings it up across the midcourt stripe, picked up by Shannon Bogues. Angles to the right. Yo-yo's between the leg. Looks down low. Going to get a screen from Hart. Takes it back to the middle of the floor. Stops, left side, feeds it to Dalton. Dalton will dribble back to the middle, leave it for Gates. He's open for a three, and Jay drains the tray. Gates with a big bucket. He's got 14 now, and the Huskies back up by nine. Instant offense. Fitzgerald out top. He's going to try to drive in over Gates, and he will put it on the floor and take it off the glass and down through for two. Size advantage there to Fitzgerald. And he used the mismatch to his advantage. 
Cut this back to seven, 75-68. Three minutes left. Bonds left side, screen from Hart. Takes it to the right. Leave it with the bounce pass for Dalton. Tried to go inside to Hart, and it's tipped and stolen away. Bogues on the run, back the other way. Leave it for Harris, open for a three, and he drains it. And all of a sudden, this is a four-point ball game, 75-71. Can't get sloppy here if you're the Huskies. Two and a half minutes to go as Gates brings it into the front court. Right side angle, goes out top to Ian DeBose. Ian will drive back, kick it on the wing to Gates, open for a three, short, the rebound tipped. It's going to be knocked out of bounds off of Hart and back over to SFA. It goes with 219 left, 75-71. Harris now has 32 points on the night. Bonds and Gates will check out Osuji and Lynch Daniels will check in for HBU. Huskies want some defensive effort here. Bonds, though, one of the better defenders, best in steals in the conference. And he's going to get a breather for the moment. Harris will drive in high off the glass. This one won't go. Osuji with the loose ball, going to bring it back up. Into the front court, under two minutes to go. Huskies by four. Suge is going to be bumped way out top. Sorrell will pick up the foul, and Osuji will go to the line for free throws here. Suge with 11, and he can add to that and give a little bit of breathing room here for the Huskies with 147 to go. But the first one comes up short. Osuji for the evening. Six of eight now at the free throw line. Scott, 12 points. A second free throw won't go down either. Rolled around the iron and pulled down by Sorrell for the Lumberjacks. Huskies still have that four-point lead, but SFA with the basketball in the hands of Shannon Bogues. Out top to Bain. He'll drive in through traffic. Floats up a little runner in the paint. Over Hart, he gets it to go, and it's a two-point ball game, 75-73. Right back where we were at the half, and Coach Cottrell wants a timeout with 80 seconds to go. 30-second timeout called by HBU here. And we'll hang on to it right here with 120 left. Kevon Harris has 32 points. Bain just dropped in his 13th point of the night in the paint there. They've also got Shannon Bogues with 10. And Fitzgerald has 10 as well. They've got four players in double digits. The Huskies with three. 16 for DuBose to lead the way. Gates with 14. Osuji with 12. Ty Dalton has seven. Ed Hart has eight. Two from Braxton Bonds tonight. Bonds has five rebounds and an assist as well. Osuji, by the way, with his 12 points, also has eight assists. McKenzie off the bench has two. Six from Ollie Lynch Daniels. Eight from Ben Yoloko. Huskies. With the basketball out of the timeout, and Osuji will get it inbound to Hart, and Hart will give it right back to him. 19 on the shot clock as Osuji dribbles out beyond the arc. Bounce pass down low to DuBose, and Ian corrals it and lays it off the glass for two. Held your breath for a minute there if you're a Huskies fan, and now SFA wants a timeout with 101 to go, and the Huskies holding a two-possession lead. And this is going to be a full timeout. So we will allow you to catch your breath as well. We'll take a timeout here on the Husky Sports Network. 77-73, HBU with the lead and a minute to go. 
Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. It would be great if human beings were great at being human. And if all of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men. It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known. And if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man. And the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Back at Sharp Gym out of the timeout. SFA with the basketball on the inbounds play, trailing by four now. We roll under a minute to go. Fitzgerald with the basketball, right side, double team, kicks it back out top. Bain saves it. And the corner, left side to Neiman, and a three won't go, but Bain with the rebound puts it up. Let's see. They're going to call it on the floor. Count the bucket, they say, and the foul is going to be on... Oliver Lynch Daniels. Back to a two point game, 77 75. 42 seconds to go. And that was the fourth foul on Ollie Lynch Daniels, and the free throw gets a big bounce straight up in the air and drops down through. And it's a one-point game as the Huskies bring it up, and they want a timeout as Ollie Lynch Daniels gets it across the timeline. 76, or check it, 77-76, Huskies by one. And we're going to hang on to it right here. Well, it's an odd number, so... Unless we get free throws here and get it back to an even number, you got to think one of these teams is going to come away with a close victory here in about 35 seconds. HBU has 24 seconds on the shot clock, so no matter what happens here, SFA will at least get one final possession. They have just... Are actually, they have no timeouts left, do the Lumberjacks. The Huskies, after calling one here, have a single timeout left. So they can burn one here if they need to, but first order of business is to get the ball inbounds securely. Hart will pop out and help out. And now he's holding it up and going to give it to Osuji. We roll under 30 seconds to go. Suji with the dribble out top. Leave it for Ian DeBose. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Ian almost has it stolen away. And now bump from behind, and it is stolen. Harris off on the move. He's going to take it in. Goes up, but he's going to be fouled. And Oliver Lynch Daniels, I think, may be done. That could be his fifth. That is his fifth. Oliver Lynch Daniels with five has fouled out of the ball game tonight. Bad luck for Ollie and bad luck for the Huskies as it's going to send Kevon Harris to the free throw line with 13.8 seconds to go, and he's got 32 points tonight and can give them a one-point lead with a couple of free throws here. 77-76, the Huskies by one. The fans trying to be a distraction, but Harris ties it up on the first free throw at 77 apiece. 33 points now. He's 9 of 12 at the free throw line tonight. Missed his first three and has made every one since. Now 10 in a row. He's 10 of 13. Gives him a one-point lead. 13.8 left. The Huskies have the final possession, though, and they'll use their final timeout and bring it up the floor with an opportunity to win. 
We shall see. Hang on to your hats, folks. Huskies were sluggish out of the gate tonight. They fell behind early 6-0, then battled back. Actually had a halftime lead of 41-39. Extended their lead to as many as 12 points on a couple of different occasions here in the second half. And for a long time, we're right there in the 9 to 11 point range with the lead trading buckets with SFA in the second half. But SFA with a late run led by Kevon Harris, who now has 34 points. He did a lot of it down in the paint and a lot of it at the free throw line. And in 38 minutes, he has put up 34 points. And now with those last two free throws has brought them back from 12 down here in the second half to one up. Huskies have made just one of their last five three-point attempts. They don't need a three-pointer here. They're going to send Dalton, DuBose, Osuji, Gates, and Yuloko. Ben Yuloko checks in for Ed Hart here. And Dalton will go back and get it inbounds to Osuji. Suji brings it up. And he's going to draw an offensive foul here on Stephen Osuji. With 8.3 seconds to go. And the Huskies can't believe it. They're going to want to foul Neiman in here if they can, but Kyle Keller is going to send Neiman into the baseline, try and keep him as far away from the basketball as possible. Bain will look to inbound it, and now we've got a whistle away from the basketball. Going to get a foul on Osuji again. And it's going to send Harris to the free throw line. Kevon Harris will go back to the line. Well, no time goes off the clock. I don't think the Huskies wanted that foul. Well, Suji picks up his fourth, but that's kind of a moot point right now. Harris with the first one. Gets it to go. The Huskies will still have eight seconds to get it up the floor. No timeouts for either team, so they won't be able to set up anything except to bring it up the floor. The SFA backs everybody but Harris away from the line. The second free throw is no good. Two-point game as DuBose brings it up. He's going to drive left side, going to drive in, kick it back out. Gates open for a three at the buzzer. Won't go. Oh, off the iron. And SFA is going to walk out of here with a two-point victory. Jay Gates had a look at the buzzer. But it hit the front iron and just would not go down. And the Huskies will fall by two at the Sharp Tank tonight. Well, we told you it would be an entertaining game. Does not come out the way the Huskies would have hoped. But it lived up to the billing. Going to take a timeout. We'll come back with Huskies postgame report. Stick around on the Husky Sports Network and HBU TV. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. Rolling up on a cheap price feels good, but cheap comes with risk. Heart surgeons, pilots, no one hires a cheap one of them. Fact is, certain things must be done right. 
Installing electricity in Houston schools and hospitals needs to be built with manpower that spent 10,000 hours training to do their job. So for heart surgeons to do their job, we must do ours. Skilled labor isn't cheap, and cheap labor isn't all that skilled. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. At Holiday Inn Express, we can't guarantee that you'll be able to contain yourself at our breakfast bar. Morning, egg white omelet. Sup, lady bacon. Fruit. There it is. But we can guarantee that you'll get the best price when you book with us. Holiday Inn Express. Be the readiest. Hi, I'm Ron Cottrell. Thanks for listening to HBU Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Are you a real story is I'm in here every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me and then the rest is for the office. So yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. So. Well, I used to think it was just fruit filled stuff and then I came here and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> It's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> when you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HVU athletics pepsi's always had great taste today try great taste with zero sugar this is the pepsi with zero compromises this is pepsi zero sugar this is the pepsi that gets you stuff like tickets to what's up everybody i'm george Pepsi. who doesn't love pepsi stuff drink pepsi get stuff Run with UA Map My Run. With your UA Connected footwear, you can leave your phone behind. However, if you choose to run with it, the UA Map My Run app will give map views of your route and a deeper look at your workout with additional stats. We are under our The future is ours! Under Armour. We're passionate, delivering expert neurological care for adults and children. We're dedicated, responding to neurotrauma and stroke with LifeLight in our Level 1 Trauma Center. We're persistent, restoring lives at our Tier Rehabilitation and Research Hospital. We are Memorial Hermann. And we're making neuroscience breakthroughs every day. Four Points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Back here, back here at Sharp Gym on the campus of Houston Baptist University, Lonnie King welcoming you in to the Huskies postgame report. And a heartbreaking loss tonight here on the home floor for HBU, 79-77 at the hands of the SFA Lumberjacks. SFA moves to 5-4 and four in Southland Conference play. The Huskies... See their two-game win streak come to an end tonight, and they drop to three and seven in Southland play. Uh, heading into their weekend off this Saturday, Huskies though with four minutes to go. We had a media timeout, the final media timeout of this game, uh, the regular of regulation, uh, had a 72-64 lead, but they were outscored 15 to five by SFA. Over the last four minutes of play, SFA went four of six from the floor, including one of two from the uh, three-point line. 
But the big number is uh, six of seven at the free throw line over the last four minutes. Got seven looks at the charity stripe and made six of those seven. While the Huskies are turning it over three times, going two of four from the floor and going 0 for 2 at the free throw line. So, you know, that combination, SFA getting to the line more often and being able to uh, to make their free throws when they got there, the Huskies not getting the free throws when they got there and also uh, turning the ball over a couple of times were critical down the stretch and results in an eight-point lead turning into a two-point loss here at the Sharp Tank tonight. But it was a very entertaining game. The Huskies led by two at the midway point, 41-39. Outscored in the second half, 40-36 to for the final tally here. As we told you late in the second half, the Huskies had as much as a 12-point lead um, after going on a 13-0 scoring run. Uh, early in the second half of this game, they took it uh, from a one-point deficit up to a 12-point advantage uh, with 15-14 to go in the second half. And it looked like they were going to be able to keep SFA at arm's length as they let the lead hover around that 9-11 to point stretch there for the majority of the second half after that. And uh, it was only late that... Uh, Kevon Harris sort of led the charge back for SFA, and he does finish up tonight with 35 points and six rebounds, five assists in this game. Uh, their big scorer, their big producer of the night to um, lead the way to their two-point win uh, over the Huskies here on the home floor. But HBU... Uh, with a good start to the second half after the sluggish start to the first half and then the sluggish finish to close out this game. Individually speaking, the Huskies were led tonight by Ian DeBose, who had 18 points and five boards. 14 points for Jalen Gates off the bench tonight. He was four of eight overall, three of six from the three-point line and three for three at the free throw line. Jay uh, finishes... Second leading scorer on the team tonight, Stephen Osuji with another good effort tonight in a starting role. He finishes with a dozen points, nine assists, and five rebounds for Suge. Tonight, just a solid effort for the senior from Kincaid. Uh, rounding out the scoreboard for HBU, Ben Yoloko off the bench with eight points. Edward Hart, eight points, six boards tonight, and a couple of assists for the center for the Huskies. Six points for Oliver Lynch Daniels before he fouled out tonight late in this ball game. Then you've got uh, seven from Ty Dalton. Seven points, six boards, a couple of assists, and three steals for Dalton in this game. And two points apiece from Braxton Bonds and Phillip McKenzie to round out the scoring for your Huskies. SFA, as we told you, led by... Kevon Harris, who finishes with 35, but they have three other guys finishing double digits as well. 16 points for Nathan Bain. And then 10 apiece from Devontae Fitzgerald, who also had six boards. And 10 points from Shannon Bogues, who had three assists as well. Now they get the majority of scoring from those four guys and only, let's see, eight other points from three other players, two from Neimanen tonight, three apiece from Como and Sorrell. Otis Walker, three and a half minutes of floor time, no scoring. Jovan Gruich with five minutes and did not score as well. But they got all they needed from Kevon Walker, or Kevon Harris, excuse me, in the second half. And Nathan Bain added 16 as well, and it was enough to uh, spell defeat. For the Huskies tonight. Some of the hustle board uh, points off turnovers. SFA 23 to 13 edge there. The Huskies finish up with 15 turnovers tonight, including three in the last four minutes. And then uh, 12 turnovers for SFA. 
points in the paint also belonging to the Lumberjacks tonight. 42-30 edge there. And again, that was a column that the Huskies had dominated for the last handful of games. Uh, second chance points. SFA winds up with a slight edge there. 13-12 the advantage there. And then fast break points, 20-16. to The edge goes to the Lumberjacks as well. The only area uh, was points off the bench. The Huskies with the 30 to six advantage there, but again, the starters contributed so much for SFA. They didn't need a whole lot out of their bench tonight. Huskies out rebound SFA 44-34, 17-9 edge on the offensive boards as well. Um, but again, they turned the ball over three more times. Steals fairly even, nine for the Huskies, eight for SFA, assists, 17 assists on 26 made baskets for HBU, nine on 29. Now, a lot to like if you look and just at the score, at the uh, final stats here, but uh, the Huskies just wind up on the short end of a two point scoreboard. We're going to take a timeout when we come back. We'll chat with the head coach, Ryan Cottrell, to wrap this one up on the Husky Sports Network. Houston Federal Credit Union and Houston Baptist University have joined forces to put the howl back in your finances. HFCU offers several products and services such as auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards. And HFCU has a financial education program, Elevate, which is tailored to helping you increase your financial knowledge. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. I'm Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. Back when we were firemen, when it came to food, we said it better be something good and, and a lot, lot of it. it. That's what you get at Firehouse Subs. Take our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breast, Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese, all steam heated and piled high on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. You're going to cover that, right? My money's on the sub. Love the confidence. <laughs> Firehouse Sub, founded by firemen. International Brotherhood of Electric Workers, Local 716 in Houston, get up for work each day because we believe building schools to code matters. Because building Houston's hospitals correctly saves lives. Because training for 10,000 hours makes a difference. That's why we get up, because we want to make a difference. To be the best, hire the best. IBEW, where skill and value lock arms. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. This is Ron Cottrell, and you're listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. And we're back here at Sharp Gym following the 79-77 loss to SFA tonight. Joined by the head coach, Ron Cottrell. And coach, uh, just a tough finish to that game. Um, the, the flurry of uh, points by SFA at the end there. Kevon Harris was just out of his mind tonight, but yeah. a couple of turnovers and uh, a couple of missed shots there toward the end kind of helped them to get back into it. Yeah, we felt like we were up 12, and we kind of had things in, in, in our favor, and we were running what we wanted to run. We were getting to the rim, and we, we had like three or four or five possessions where we got to the rim and the ball didn't go in the hole. Yeah. And, and you know, you do that two or three or three or four times in a row, uh, you know, they, they, they have the opportunity to come back down and score and cut into your lead, and, and they started whittling away, and, and we just had a heck of a time trying to contain Kevon Harris, and he's so big and strong and, and just kind of took us to the rim, and we were having a hard time keeping him out of, out of the paint. Yeah, his, his effort notwithstanding, though, it, it looked like for the majority of the game, you, you did have uh, the flow of the game going your way. You guys uh, yeah. handled their their pressure very yeah. well. You were you uh, were step for step with them on the offensive end. A lot of things to like about tonight except yeah. the final score. I thought after the first, maybe after the first media or so, we kind of settled in and, and, and handled their pressure well. I thought early on, we were playing on our heels a little bit, uh, but then we kind of settled in and started making plays. We, we missed a ton of shots right at the very beginning of the game. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden we started kind of getting in a flow and, and feeling like we could we could play through their contact and their overplaying. And, 
and uh, you know we led 30 minutes of the game and and just didn't lead when we needed to and and uh, I, you know when we got a 12 you know they're fairly, you know late I, I thought we were right there on the verge of, of putting it in a putting it in a really good position and again we just didn't finish plays towards the end of the game that we need to finish and you know missed a few free throws that would have changed things a little bit as well yeah and it uh, it does kind of you know point out the how, how it is always and I think we've talked about this on numerous occasions but there there are little things that that may go overlooked in the moment but you look back on them and you go wow that that could have made a difference there you think about the the free throws missed down here by Osuji after he'd been so clutch oh, yeah, absolutely and, uh, and and then just a couple of, of turnovers where the passing lanes had been there all night but yeah. At right those points, they got deflected. got into the hands. Yeah. They got hands in the way. And, and it's just uh, uh, minor things that make the difference between a win and a loss. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how this league is. I mean, we're we, how many times have we been right here in this situation this year? Uh, we're in every game. we got to find ways to, to finish games on a positive note where we get the W more often. Uh, and I told the guys in the locker room, that's not a knock on them. That's, that's on all of us. That's us as a team, coaches and and everybody included, we got to find ways to finish games. We're putting ourselves in positions to win ball games. We just got to finish better, and and that's on all of us to figure out how, what it takes to get that done. Good individual efforts to talk about tonight. Uh, Ian Debose kind of got back to his ways. He's had a couple of games where the opponents have really tried to shut him down, yeah. and he's done other things besides scoring, but. He got back at the top of the score column tonight. Yeah, I thought he was the one that kind of got us off uh, on track early in the first half, hit a couple shots to kind of get us in a flow and feeling some confidence. And then he made some plays uh, middle of the second half that really kind of got us that lead and got us going. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, he's a big part of who we are and what we're doing. And, and certainly people have been, been really putting a lot of uh, emphasis on him defensively. Uh, but tonight he was able to kind of get get some confidence back. I thought Jalen Gates gave us another really really good ball game off the off the bench, knocked down some shots, uh, and and did some really good things. Uh, you know, Stephen, we talked about Stephen before. I thought mm -hmm. Ty did some things that maybe not show up in the in the box so much, but but you know, getting deflections, getting his hands on balls, saving plays, uh, things like that. Things that that Ty's just so good at. Uh, and then he gets on the glass and really rebounds hard. So. Uh, you know, a lot of things we can build on. We just can't keep letting these slip away. Yeah, one more. I, I thought Ben Yoloko had oh, another absolutely. good ben, uh, effort off the bench in his absolutely. minutes tonight. And yeah. uh, he, he really seems like he's developing his game as the season rolls on. Yeah, he's so calm. I mean, nothing gets him rattled. He just kind of cruises along and does his job and and, uh, and makes plays when you need them. And, and you'd never know it by watching his demeanor. He's, he's just a cool customer. And and he's continuing to, de to develop, that's for sure. Well, now you got a few days off before you get ready to take on uh, Central Arkansas up there. Always a tough road trip, uh, yep. and it's going to be a tough team to play up there. But uh, one of those games that, that I know you're going to want to get and try and sneak out of Conway with a win next week. Yeah, this, it, it makes, this outcome of this game makes that game that much more important. We've got to turn around and bounce back on the road and, in a tough situation, uh, in a tough place, and, and do everything we can to give ourselves an opportunity and then finish plays at the end of the game. All right. Well, enjoy the weekend off, and All we'll right. see you, you next too. Wednesday night. All right. Sounds good. Ron Cottrell, the head coach of the Huskies. We will take one more time out, come back and put a wrap on this one. Wrap things up here from Sharp Jim on the Husky Sports Network. If Raising Cane's one love was rock music, they would rock harder than any rock band ever. Their tours would sell out before they were announced. Their backstage parties would be the stuff of legend, attended by unicorns and the head of Louis XIV. Hotel rooms would trash themselves out of respect. But Raising Cane's one love isn't rock music. It's making the perfect chicken finger meal every single time. Raising Cane's one love. <laughs> Astronauts, August 14th will be a day to remember. 10, 9, August 14th? Eight, That's my seven, anniversary. Six, I gotta go. Five, four, three, two, uh, one. Houston? Did 
Anyone stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night? Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. Well, we're back here a week from Saturday against the Nichols Colonels. But before then, we'll have a weekend off and then Wednesday night next week in Conway, Arkansas for Central Arkansas. But that's going to wrap it up for now. The final again tonight, heartbreaking loss, 79-77 to the SFA Lumberjacks. For everyone at the Husky Sports Network and everyone at HBU TV, including our director and producer, Mariano J. Rivera, and cameraman Blue Jay Davis. We thank you for being a part of this one. I'm Lonnie King. We will see you down the road. Have a great weekend. Talk to you next week. Dogs up. You've been listening to HBU Husky Sports on the DNA Husky Sports Network. These broadcasts are brought to you by the corporate partners of HBU Athletics, Houston Federal Credit Union, Memorial Hermann Healthcare System, Marriott Houston West Chase, Raising Canes, Under Armour, Firehouse Subs, Pepsi, Shipley Donuts, Four Points by Sheraton, IBEW Local 716, Jimmy John Subs, Kalachi Factory, and Holiday Inn Express. That's going to do it for now, but we thank you for being a part of this broadcast, and until we see you again down the road, so long and dogs up.